my gosh, everybody's jumping in here. I saw all the names. Oh my, everybody's excited to come and see our spotlight speaker. Yes. Hey, Jennifer. I actually, we got a couple Jennifers, I, you know. <laughs> so, uh, looks like Dawn, Dawn Zoldai's here as well, Linda. Wow. Hello, everybody. Super excited to see you. Hope your Tuesday is going wonderful, right? So we want to give it a couple minutes and make sure that everybody has an opportunity to log in here. Carolyn, Carolyn's here. Uh, Carolyn, am I allowed to say that I'm going to be seeing you possibly coming up in uh, April? Yeah. Okay, well, that's a quick little segue. Just as a quick reminder, Women in Drones has two amazing workshops coming up, right? We've got the Autel workshop coming up, and that's April 2nd, which that's where I'm going to be seeing uh, Carolyn. And then we also have the workshop that's coming up in, in Texas for the um, uh, disaster training. And that's with Robin. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. So I will make sure that while we're going through all this today, I will put in the links if anybody's interested in joining us uh, and seeing maybe me and Carolyn, right? We're going to see you there. And I know we've already had several people signing up for them. So that's pretty cool. Uh, got a lot going on today. Uh, pretty exciting day. Usually we are, right? Everybody loves to connect, right? Is this just the best way to kick off our Tuesdays? So uh, apparently I will be flying solo. Uh, Kim is not able to join today. She's traveling. And so um, you're stuck with just me today. Uh, she's on her way back from Florida, I do believe. And uh, she said she could even pull over and wait, but um, not a good idea. So, <laughs> uh, so um, I want to, oh, you know what? I will go ahead and share those two workshops that we have because we did kind of start our day with that information. So let me put this into our chat. Hang on one second. Let some more people in here. Look at everybody. Shout out. Anybody got to do a shout out for a great week that they've had? Maybe doing something in the drone industry? Go ahead. I might share what awesome stuff is happening. I'll go ahead and let me jump in. We, we had something going last week. Uh, I did get a couple of um, emails back. We are still running that body camera special. Oh, for yeah. Women in Drones. We're doing the MD-10 $249 camera for $50 shipped to women oh in drones people. Oh my gosh, Jim, wow. fantastic. Yep, yep. it's the, it's the exact camera that I wear as my body camera uh, on the job. And it Ew. has been instrumental in preventing the he said, he said problems of working with individual people. And it's funny <laughs> on how often people's perspective of what happened is different than what the camera's perspective is oh, <laughs> so man. that's available if you want uh let me just put it in chat and we can connect offline desi wants one desi wants one okay i thought there yeah. was only one and so i was like oh, okay well probably. no actually we got a i was able to get a whole case of them stepped aside just for us here oh my so God. i'll get oh. i'll get your uh just email me your your address yeah. Uh, right. oh Send me gosh, three or four. Jim, well, we'll see what yeah. Found okay. No problem. You guys got four. me. Hit me up offside again. Fifty bucks each shipped. Yeah. Glad to that. Yeah. I'll just yeah. swing by your place. Yeah, you gotta come by, man. Wait. I oh, uh, also, if I'm gonna Wait, shout out that this counts? weekend, this weekend, <laughs> high tech is going to be at at the Pomona Fairplex for RCX. RCX oh, is the I largest the show for radio control, and this year they're combining it. It's now a uh like a fred hall fishing outdoor show a power sports show the rc expo and they're combining it a bunch so it's actually quite a, a fun event if anybody's going to come by hit me up i've got discount passes and uh we'd love to let you come by and meet the crew at the booth yeah nice jim can I you put your uh email information into the chat 
Sure. Uh, Jill has her hand up. I'm not sure if she wants is raising her hand because she wants one or if she has some. I do want one, but okay. you were just talking about different exciting things this week. And I'm really excited to be speaking at the UAS Collegiate Training Initiative um, on Thursday. So very excited about that. Fantastic. Congratulations. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, by the way, she's also a uh, spotlight speaker coming up right here on uh, the Coffee Connection, right? That's cool. So, exactly. Nice. We have so many amazing guest speakers coming up. It's so exciting. Um, just a quick little shout out. We're going to have Fiona Lakes. We have Airspace Link. Tamiko, Jennifer Birdsong. Oh my gosh, it's just amazing. So yes, this is the place to be, right? All right, with that, um, I am going to segue over to our spotlight speaker. We are very, very lucky to have our speaker here today. Uh, if you missed it, uh, the opportunity, or if you were hoping to hear a little bit more, she was actually on the Donna Jones uh, uh, show yesterday. Thank you, Don, for having her on there. And then, uh, so today we have Tony Drummond. And she is with Aerial Group. Yeah. <laughs> and Thank you. So, super exciting. She has an amazing background. And I'm going to let her share about that. But I really want to kick it off because uh, Tony is one of the um, global aerial group is a women and drones women to watch 2021 winner of the Valatis aerospace innovation team award so share with us let's just kick it off with that right share with us about the award and your team great um first of all it was such an honor to be at ces this year to receive the award for both myself and the team we are only about a year and a half into the unmanned space here and having a, owning a UAS business. And to be most of our most of our background has been doing research and it's been a lot of trial and error. So to be recognized by women in drones and to be in the company of the most amazing speakers that were lined up just to be recognized, it was it was just mind blowing. So since that point, I want to thank women in drones because it has helped inspire me. Um, to definitely fall a little bit more comfortably into my space instead of pushing myself into a, a space that maybe I thought I should be. I have naturally fallen into my space and found my place within the unmanned space here. So it's been really cool. Um, so that, that's my first, my first uh, thank yous to everyone who's, who's made that possible. Um, so a little bit about myself. I am a 25-year aviation, private aviation professional. I've been doing this. I'm a specialist. I've been doing this since I got out of college by fluke. I did not train to be a pilot or and didn't go to uh, aeronautical college or anything like that. I went to school for business and um, fell backwards into, into private aviation. So I'm going to, I'm not going to go too deep into my private aviation history. I'm going to kind of fast forward from the mid nineties um, until I would say like maybe 2010, because during that time I ran lots of large companies, lots of multiple international um, man aircraft management companies where we had planes all over the country and all over the world. So we let's segue forward to what kind of sparked my interest in getting into UAS. Um, I want to bring up one thing that I was working and I didn't even know it. How's this? Towards the end of before I was getting into UAS, I was working doing consulting work for a company and I was actually in the in the UAM world. Little did I know I was working on um, urban air mobility and we were working with Blade at that point and I was running some shuttles for them and getting some ideas of what we could do to try to reduce the airspace um, footprint and it was over you know over extended so I was I was part of that and it kind of really got my brain going on on other things that are are available so that's a little bit of the beginning of of where I got a slight interest in in what's going on here and where I am today so uh, moving forward from that I started our drone company in November of let's see, 2020, November of 2020 is when the drone company started. And the clear and easy picture between why we started the drone company was um, 
because we were in the middle of COVID and I was in an aviation role that I was in charge of bringing lots of um, tours and, and stuff like that to, to different cities all over the place. And so we tried to find a solution. So after tons and tons of research, we started really getting into the spraying and the drone agriculture. Um, I started looking into cleaning and sanitizing from the air and how that can help our um, celebrities and, and our artists to really continue on with their shows. So that was a sure. very, very, very... <laughs> Be the kidding. drone itself is not hard to fly. I mean, for God's sakes, it has GPS, the altitude hold, and all that stuff. You need to understand how all that shit works. It, is this directed towards me? Hello? I don't think it was. It sounds oh. like she was talking to a third party. Okay. <laughs> I think somebody was having a conversation that... Uh... Bled over. Bled over, yeah. I was like, well, that, that's a little bit awkward, but okay. Or somebody needed to be mute. Somebody needed to be no muted, yeah. Okay, that's yes. no problem. I was just making sure I was, oh, oh okay. <laughs> um, let me get my bearings again, you guys. Where was I? I'm so sorry. Um, started okay. the drone company. <laughs> okay, Artist. let's go back to the... Safety. <laughs> the, the drone cleaning. We were at the drone cleaning section. <laughs> I'm sorry. I try really hard to mute everybody. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. That happens all the time. Um, uh, not quite like that. Um, but yeah, so the, the drone cleaning and the agriculture. So that's, that, that's where we were in, the, in, in our lifespan of, of where we are here at Global Aerial Management Group. So yes, we, we did um, dabble in that and we went out and we have um, a lease drone that we have that we went and did some spring. We were doing schools. We were doing some concerts, but wasn't really anything um, substantial. There was a, the first thing I found out when I started this was that there's so many layers to the sale of selling UAS that it wasn't accepted in the airspace. Obviously, there's so many people looking up going, what is that? Is it going to attack me? There's such a misunderstanding. We know the huge value and the need for community awareness. That's not something I was aware of at that time. So as the cycle has grown and our um, team has grown as well, we have really focused on the things that we feel we can take our professionalism and put it into this industry to help make a difference. And so our first real goal is to get our 137, um, our agricultural spring um, from the FAA. We're gonna be working on that. The FAA should be coming out uh, to see us within the next, I would say, three to six weeks to be able to accomplish that goal. We've been working really hard on our manuals and working with our compliance officer. And we have, um, we have some strategic partners and some partnerships that are going to come that will be announced uh, as well, as far as that is concerned. So that's a really huge goal for us, Desi. We, you know, as, as people that have had to learn from the beginning what this looks like, um, and apply our aviation knowledge towards drones. It's been very difficult. It's been very hard to transcribe. It's not black and white like I'm used to working in, in the FAA world. So um, we're really excited about it. There's, there's a lot going on for us and that part of it and how we're gonna phase into the agricultural UAS world is that's really like, that keeps, that just gets me really excited to think about the Can possibilities. Can you share a little bit about some of the hurdles and successes that you've had as you've gone through that process? And then it, it looks like uh, Kadir would like to know about uh, how did you get started uh, with that part 137? Sure. Um, so I'll answer that question first. The part 137, obviously, when I started getting into the spraying situation, I realized quickly that we had to have a part 137 in order to spray anything outdoors. So we realized, you know, we're familiar with the FAA. Um, my other company is Prestige Air Group, and we're a part 135 charter company. So we all we have a part 135 certificate. So we have a director of compliance, and that has really helped our our journey because his expertise mixed in with our expertise have helped us get over the hurdle of figuring out the difference between a 137 as it applies to aviation and flying say an ag cat or a 137 as it applies to drones. So there's been a little bit of a learning curve there for us. And to be honest with you, every single 
any part of the country, every state is different. There's There might be a general idea of what you need to do, but the FAA in general in every state, every FISDO has something different that they require. So um, being in Nevada, we've been working with uh, the people that are in our district here. And yeah, this is, this is a first for them too. So it's really cool to kind of be working through the process. It's not as scary as it might be because we're, it's, it's a work in progress. It's gonna be the first for them as well. So that's the answer to that question. Um, Desi, so some of our challenges, well, our biggest, my biggest challenge that I have met so far that I did not prepare for was the public's, and I say this again and again, it's the public's response to drones. And the first time I literally pulled our agricultural drone by myself, which is in a big giant case and, you know, pulling it through the airport, literally I've had, I had people from TSA stopping going, what's in there? Does it climb the walls? Is it a spider? Does it shoot? And I said, oh my God, we, whoa, <laughs> this is going to be, I had no idea what I was getting into you guys. This is from, I'm from the other side of the, the river, you know? So um, I realized that community awareness is like goal number one. If we don't get the public to accept what's going on, you know, that what bringing a drone out is, is going to scare people. So um, that's been one of our biggest hurdles and we've been overcoming it with education. That's what's kind of pushed me into STEM a little bit as well, because realizing that there's, you know, there's such, there's so many people on this board that are involved in education and STEM. And I totally, from the inside out, from walking the walk, I understand it now so much and the value and how important it is for the future of our workforce. So that's, um, that's a little bit about what's, what's going on with the 137 and, and what's going on with the, with the jet business. So, um, yeah, that's, when we, that's that. When you're talking about the workforce and the future and education training, and, and you also mentioned all about your documents, your SOPs. Well, I'm really big on that one, right? Uh, <laughs> so can you share a little bit about what's involved and what you've had to go through to make all that come together? Well, I want to touch upon um, something that I, I don't usually talk about when we're when I'm, I'm speaking and because this is a women in Jones chat and it's it's so open and it's, it's such a great forum. Um, I just want to bring up the intersection of how actual life is intersecting with owning a business and an entrepreneurial business at, for women and I think i'm not the only one going through it as a mother as a wife, um, I have a child that's graduating college. I have a, um, a child that's a freshman in high school that's a hockey player, so I'm still driving them everywhere. You see I'm sitting in a hotel room here taking my, my chat because life is just going full speed and I'm just keeping up. And I'll be honest with you, the biggest piece of advice that I've gotten from myself and I've learned over the past, just, just, just real, is that live your true life. Like this is my true life. If I have to get on the phone with a CEO or I have to get on a Zoom with somebody who's very high level. And I just have to say, listen, I'm so sorry that I have to take this call from my car, but literally my son's inside playing a hockey game and I have to do both at the same time. And every single one of them has said, good for you. I'm so happy to see you doing that. I'm so happy to see you balancing life. So that uh, now that I'm owning that, and I would advise everybody else here who seems to be you know, having those little tidbits of struggle, own it. You know, tell, tell your truths. Don't try to fake it till you make it. That's not, that's, there's nothing good coming out of that. Own your truth ask for help, ask for assistance. You know, there's so many professionals on here right now that know a hundred times more than I ever will with drones. And I will be calling upon, um, upon you guys on, you know, as a community for help. So yeah, I, I wanted to just share that. Um, I love this community and I really appreciate everyone embracing both myself, the other ladies and the gentlemen that have started in this crazy business of the unknown of, of unmanned. So Great advice. Great advice. The FAA. Amen. Their, yes. Uh, the FAA just had their uh, women in aviation uh, meeting yesterday and it, oh, it was fantastic. It was so inspiring. And I can't along wait. Those lines, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> along those lines, it's a perfect segue to tell me about some of the networking you have been doing lately. Uh, there may oh, be gosh. some people that you've been interacting with <laughs> right here on this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, First of all, I'd like to say that while well, I had Don Zoldai is, is in town or she was in town yesterday visiting with us here at our hangar in Henderson, 
Um, we're working on some collaborations and one of them is her Law Tech Connect at AUVSI that I've been helping her with the educational side of that. We're bringing students into the Law Tech Connect to introduce college age students and faculty to some of the program or some of these speakers that are gonna be there. She's got 30 speakers lined up, really amazing. So um, that's one of the collaborations that we have going on. And I also wanted to mention that I've met here, I think Renee, I saw Renee pop up on here. Wow, she's such an inspiration. She was also out to see us a couple of weeks ago at Henderson Airport. And we're talking about grants and different types of, um, she works for her company is grant, Drone Grantology, which I absolutely love. And so many opportunities, you guys, I didn't even know were available for us, especially in the educational sector where we're feeling so passionate to wanna to really help increase the diversity in the workforce. There's tons of grants out there. You need to reach out to her. So she's actually helping us with some local um, grant writing. And I, I'm over the moon. That's something I've been wanting to do since we started this company. And again, I met her at Women in Drones. <laughs> so that helped me um, move along. This has been, it's such a beautiful intersecting um, synergy of all these, these people that we've met along the way. One person just helping me rise and me helping them rise on top of one on, one on top of the next. And that's what it's all about networking getting to yes. make those connections and and i love that this is a safe environment where people can reach out and so it's pretty pretty exciting that you got to meet up with everybody here recently and make a lot yes. of connections right uh linda yes. says, are you here in henderson nevada today i am yes. i am i'm yeah. going to be at the airport if, if wow. you want i can share information you can come pay me a visit i'd love yeah. company i'm right down the street from the airport Oh, great. I have four sites great. right next to that airport that I fly. Are you and kidding me? I'd love to meet you. That's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's, uh, I'll put my email in, right in here and you, you uh, email me after you're done. We'll find a time today to get together. Okay. Excellent. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. We're all so big hockey fans in this house. Oh my God. I guess Golden Knights. Uh, the um, Henderson uh, Silver Knights. Are, they're well, not okay. playing tonight. They're not okay. playing tonight. <laughs> I wish, but they're not playing tonight, I don't think. Uh, that's great. Sounds Thanks. like I'll a Women in Drones that. meetup is happening right now, right? In front of us. <laughs> yeah, no, they're not playing tonight. But beautiful new arena. You have to come see that too. Yes, my son's played there. We can talk about that offline perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Feel free to put any comments or questions into the chat. If you have any questions about uh, working through some of the uh, hurdles that she has had, uh, the successes that she has had, um, we've talked about that 137. You know, the research and development, I know she's done a lot with that. So please put all your comments in there. Dawn has said, thank you, Tony, for the help with the inspiration and the inspiration for our law tech career wow. uh, scholarship program. Can you share a little bit more about the scholarship program? Um, yes, Dawn's um, one of the clients that we, I, I believe Dawn works with is called Carisoft. They're a government um, a, a very, very big government company, and they sponsored 12, 10 or 12 students, I'm not sure, to come to the Law Tech Connect for, for that. So, um, you know, when we started talking about this, and I said, Don, this is such a great program that you put together. It's great. Myself, um, one of my team members, Samantha, will be at attending as well. And uh, it just, I feel like that type of thing where you have, you're standing there with all of these amazing, 30 amazing professionals, I, just to be in the same room with these people to get their inspiration. And then to have the faculty come in from these colleges that are gonna be able to teach the UAS, it's so important. We don't have like a clear chain of that. The information is going so fast that it's not really able to keep up with the ecosystem of the educational institutions, in my opinion. Um, from what I can see anyway. So this, this definitely helps that. So people can share their real world knowledge with the faculty that can then share with the students. Nice, awesome. So that, that was cool. Um, I also need to mention that something really fun, I, I forgot to bring up that um, last week I was at the NASA test. They had the industry test day for the UTM. And that's something that's always, you know, the unmanned traffic management system and what they're doing with the airspace, of course, as an aviator, that's something that's always been of interest to me. So I was so happy that 
I was selected to go in person. I know a lot of people attended that online and um, it was just such a great, I mean, talk about a career highlight to be able to walk on to listening to Huey Chan, Chan talk about um, NASA Ames at Women in Drones and then walking into NASA Ames just a couple months later. Wow, a couple weeks later, I was blown away. Um, just what they're doing between the FAA and NASA is really incredible. And they're, the test sites are all over, there are six test sites all over the country. We are looking, I work with um, Promodrone, I'm an advisor for Promodrone, that's a, that's a great company out of San Diego. They're doing some really, really cool stuff. And I'm also gonna be working with some other companies. We're gonna be taking some of those um, use cases to the test sites so we can really model these out and get things moving. So I was so overwhelmed to be there in, with everyone there and people are really excited about where we're going and we're moving faster than we ever were. So that I wanted to bring up too of, of how cool that was and, and how we're really excited and I can't wait to help to start presenting some of these use cases to you guys. Um, so, and to, to also start to um, pull in some of the other use cases that are out there and start really feeding our research. So it's, it, that was a really fun experience that I had a couple of weeks ago. Actually, that was just last week. It feels like a couple of weeks ago because we don't <laughs> stop these days, but <laughs> <laughs> I know things do go fast. <laughs> yes. Wow. So um, it looks like there's a congratulations in there congratulating you on that. Thank you. Uh, okay. Linda did post the um, information that you can reach out to her into our chat as well. Um, Great. Can you touch a little bit on the STEM and maybe is there anything that we have a lot of people that uh, join us here on this network that have a huge heart and okay. very actively involved with STEM and different mm -hmm. aspects of education and is there any type of ask that you have is there a need or anything that you would need from or just conversation yeah I I envision you know my reason for wanting to get involved in, in the STEM and the education obviously comes from the direct fallout of feeling um the other side of it which is being a woman in aviation seeing you know for a very long time no other women starting to get into the drone industry. And thankfully there's, there's, a, there's a lot more diversity over here. Um, but you know, realizing that we, we just do need the diverse workforce, that's part of my reason and understanding that I do have the connections that I can bring in. So one thing that I'm really proud of is that I can network, um, I can network from the aviation side of things. I have a giant network from in aviation and you know, now the UAS side of things. So I wanna almost, get a plan together and I have a plan together. I can't quite come out with it yet, but my plan is gonna be um, something that incorporates and weaves in many different STEM programs. And we are going to be looking to help fund and help um, create and help, um, uh, let's see, help people that have programs in process that um, are looking to expand their programs, maybe to different states. So this is my, it's not just me, there's other people that are working on this initiative as well. And in our initiative, in our initial draft of what it looks like, it's really gonna be a support network for STEM. So at some point, um, Desi, I I'm going to definitely be, be reaching out and speaking to our community to see how we can provide services because we are going to be able to offer some services to the communities that are providing STEM. So it's more of a, what I have in mind and what we have in mind is a bit of a, of an um, umbrella, if you will. So I, it's not completely put together yet, but it's going to be a, um, uh, it's gonna be connective. It's gonna connect people and connect the programs to be able to offer them a little bit more broadly. Does that make sense? Did I, did I, this is the first time I'm explaining it live. So I hope it came out clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it was perfect. Uh, okay, put your information into our chat. And that way, yes. if somebody does want to reach out and connect with you, um, they'll have an opportunity to do that. Absolutely. And then with that, uh, does anybody have any last minute questions or something that they'd like to discuss a little bit deeper? Uh, if not, then we will go ahead and um, go into our uh, breakout sessions. And so um, looks like we got your information in there. Uh, can you provide contact information? There we yes, go. Yes, I'm, I'm actually on my phone. 
I'm not sure if anybody can just throw okay. that in for me because I'm on my phone right now. So I don't want to take myself off screen. Okay. Uh, I'm at the I hotel. will get that going. And I will go ahead and- Desi, do you have a copy of the chat too? So I can check up when we hang up or does that stay on? I can uh, see the chat. Yes. I, it does. Okay, great. Yeah. You need I to send me the chat. Know. Somebody, I can save it and send it to you too. Oh, thank Great. you so much. And you're going to be seeing her <laughs> soon, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to that because I'm just sitting at the airport taking meetings all day. So it'd be nice to have some company too. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. So, uh, Tani Smith has put information in there for it. Looks like um, uh, she said, Thank you for connecting. She put her information in there as well. Great. So, yeah. So, uh, we'll make sure that we can get you a copy of the chat. And so, thank you. Yeah. So, a lot of good information in there. And with that, what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up a uh, breakout session for us. Um, we have several people here. And so um, I'm going to do two rooms. They're going to be pretty large rooms. Um, so I would like to keep the topic going as far as STEM and moving forward and how do we see a fit and um, uh, keep that type of conversation going. And of course, involving networking. So I'm going to change my view here. And we'll go ahead and segue over to the breakout sessions. And we thank you so, so much. That kind of wraps it up.